There can be only one. I get, I get, I get. There it is, my friends. Okay. So, let's make a little jadoop. Choop. And then choop. I think that should work. So, a little bit of ex explainer. Um, we have two things going on that made me say to myself, I should break the graduate show up into two, at least for a trial run. That is, one, we just have more and more people in the dojo, so we have more people graduating. Great. Also, this FIDE rating boost, I don't know how people in general are going to react <laughs> to it, but I'm sure we're going to get some graduations through that. The general kind of hard thing is like, you know, some people are, you know, let's say you were a thousand feet and you went up to 1400 feet. It'll feel weird to jump that high, right? Some people might do it anyway. In any case, it's the new law of the land. And we are going to do a new rating conversion table for 3.0 that will address a lot of this stuff. Basically, it's an inflation. So everybody's going to get stronger, right? Uh, not just the people who got the points. If you were, let's say, USCF, um, you will still essentially get a boost in relationship to the fee day rating. For example, the, we might find out that the USCF is the same now as the fee day, as an example, right? So then we would match those. So uh, so it's gonna there's gonna be some reworking, especially where it'll be especially uh, big, of course, is in the range between 1,000 fide and like 1,700, 1,800, you know. <clears throat> okay, so also the, the show can be sometimes just too long for a boomer GM. And the boomer GM, dude, he, you know, I have problems with my eyes. Not anything extreme, but, you know, if I can't be staring at the screen forever, about <laughs> So I mean, it's, it's good for me to break it up a little bit. And I want to have time to, you know, think about everybody who has graduated. So first up, we have T-S-E-A-Q. And they say, I found a few videos of Cry Explaining Ideas on YouTube and was hooked by his easygoing and thoughtful approach. Hey, thank you very much. The idea of just putting in the mental sweat work clicks with me. No tricks, no shortcuts. I decided the dojo is the place for me. I'm really enjoying it. I really like the focus on analysis and thinking hard without computer. By the way, Jesse, if you see this, I really enjoyed reading your novel, Lisa. Thank you very much. It is now 11, basically, let's say 10 and a half years since I published that book. Time is flying. And um, yeah, that was a big project to do that book. Man. So check it out. You can find it on Amazon. All right, let's do, give uh, T-S-E-A-Q a click. I think I want to open link a new tab. I think that's what I want to do. Okay, so there you see, I'm going to follow T-S-E-A-Q. Great progress. That's the dojo working. Somebody trusting the dojo. And... Uh, they're also, well, their lead chest is a totally different level. <laughs> That's okay. Um, let's take a look at the activity. And we're going to go down one. And they did some good work, dude. 20 hours, basically. And a good macro distribution. Well, let's see if we got a game. Oh, we got several. This is great. So this person is trusting the dojo. Okay. They are trusting the dojo. And let's take a look. On my wood chess set. Okay. Um, so I think what that means, it was on chess.com, but he actually set it up, which is great. Uh, one of the key problems at this rating level is players will often uh, just, you know, you're online in front of the computer, and it's so important to slow down, you know? Uh, but it's hard to slow down and hard to not just make impulsive moves when you're sitting there in front of the computer. Okay. Okay, so here we go. E5. A little weird, right? 
ahead of six. Another loss of tempo. Great. So let's just say it. At this level, the most common mistakes you're going to find are, well, they're going to hang stuff like 94 and they're going to be losing time. Snip. Aggressive. Boom. Very nice move. And now we need a good move here. Queen d6. And you talk about bishop g3. I actually, I just think you're absolutely right. Bishop g3 makes the most sense to me. Bishop b6 probably also works, but I like bishop g3 because then you, you protect this pawn and you got knight f2 coming. And right now it's a little dangerous for you after d3. And here you lose a piece with queen c5. So now, um, <clears throat> this is a prime example of a position where we want to just ask, hey, was there any way for us to not lose the piece? And um, I think there was. If we play bishop b6, we say check to the miserable king. And if they go here to save their knight, we say no, Mr. Knight. And we get our piece back. That's the kind of thing we really, really want to have you find in the analysis. So we're down a piece. D8. I kind of like it. Good. I like that you're going forward here. Uh-huh. Now they need to be playing knight c3 here. Good. Nice move. And now uh, knight d5, bishop e2 comes with check. So that's a nice moment for you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have some good compensation. Spence and Sug, thank you for rating us. King C1. This is called The Graduate Show. Uh, every week I do this, uh, usually just on Thursdays, but we have so many graduates, we are stepping it up. Now, here's an interesting tactical moment for us. Um, Let us, okay, so bishop d2 was played, and it makes a lot of sense. But let's just briefly consider rook takes, knight takes. This way the knight is pinned. I don't know if this works. I'm just, this is an example of me just trying it out. Rook here, rook here, and queen, queen here. Let's put this bad boy here. He might be getting out is what I'm, I guess. I guess. Maybe he's getting out. Okay. So this happened. Good. And now he's really pinned. Probably we should consider for white the move knight b3 or knight e4 or knight f3 just to get out of the way. Because now it's really important to see that he's really, really pinned himself. E4, okay. I like that move. That's a good move, man. E4. Yeah. And if rook takes B5, we're just going to play E3, right? Thank you. And now we're winning. This is a great game. Boom. Good move. Good move. Great move. Great move. This one is a little weird because he's, well, he can play 97 here. So the simplest would be just to start checking him and take the pawn and then march your, now we run. He needed to play 97. There we go, bud. Check mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it looks like you had pretty good time usage. Notice your opponent uh, did not. They didn't really use their time. Ooh, it's kind of weird that we don't have the time graph here because these there's times over here. Let me just go if I go back. Mm. Huh, I don't know why it's not showing us the time graph. Oh, oh I got a delicious coffee today. <laughs> okay. Um. 
So let's go back. That was great, by the way. TSEAQ, we're going to see them graduate again soon, obviously. The, the man de la mancha over here. Uh, great. So congrats. Boom. And next up, we have BM chess. Bowel movement chess. No, oh, come on. Cry, take it easy. I've really been enjoying since joining the, improving since joining the dojo. In February, I competed my second OTP and was able to improve my rating by about 50. My favorite part of the program is the focus on longer games and game analysis. I've also really been improving at tactics as well. All said, the dojo has provided me with focus that I was lacking previously, and I look forward to more improvement. Oh, perfect. Perfect. By the way, um, actually, you know what I'm going to show you guys here? So if I go scoreboard, right? So I thought I'd just show you something cool. And I go newsfeed. If I don't click on the view all here yet, you can see really cool comments and, uh, you know, replies to people who have graduated. It's just a super cool thing at the dojo, you know. And life can be so, no so nice. Aus Deutschland is uh, always on there, you know. Yeah, super cool. And that's the guy we just looked at, TSEAQ. Really cool. Okay, so, pop. All right. So let's click on BM Chess. That's their USCF. Great. And uh, they are close to graduating again. So that's super cool. Already graduated once. Let's give a click. And we'll go back one. That's nice, dude. 35 hours of work. Yeah, and he's about to graduate again. Looking great. Okay, let's see. Clubs? No clubs yet. And here we have, this must be an uh, OTB game. G40 delay 5. Okay. So, this is an OTB game. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things I say on, on every show, actually, it's every show, is that generally people are studying the opening too early, right? And this is no exception, where White's trying to do some fancy stuff. And on knight of six, for example, e5 is the move that makes sense. And then it gets actually very hairy if we get into theory with this move. Oh my gosh, you know, yada, yada. So knight d4. And then I guess we got to ask a lot of questions about d5 and all kinds of different moves. Knight takes e4. Lots of questions. Okay, so bishop c5. And now e5 would be my question. e5 right now. Knight c3. h6. Right. Let's read what you say. I don't think this accomplishes much. I suppose it stops me from playing bishop g5, but I wasn't really wanting to play that move anyway, as it doesn't accomplish much. What this move does do is create a hook pawn that I can use to break open the king if I take the pawn with my bishop. Okay. Um, right. So one thing I'm going to stress, I stress this on every show as well, is that <clears throat> the most common mistake you're going to get, you know, at this level and then also beyond 1,000 is first, the critical mistakes at this level are going to be people hanging stuff. But beyond, right around 1,000, they start stop hanging stuff every single game. But here and after 1,000, they'll give you time, like here with H6. And um, they have a reason, of course, to do it. But what it shows is they're just not sensitive to the uh, value of time. And so, for example, here, what we really could have hurt them with is e5. And in general, if somebody gives you time, you should be able to find either a tactic or some way to win even more time. So how does this win even more time? Because the knight, we're going to undevelop that knight. Who knows where it's going to go? 
It's going to go somewhere gross. That's all we know for sure, right? Yeah. So rookie one, d6. And notice here we didn't miss a big chance with that e5 move. Okay, you make a trade. Now, why is bishop b6 controversial? Time just gave you another tempo. Queen d2, good. You take, and now you just go for it. Bam! <laughs> go for it, bam! So, right, this is unsound. And um, one of the things that we need to do in our annotations is then think about what we should have done instead. So one key thing to understand about this attack is even if there wasn't the bishop f2 stuff, the fact that the f pawn is now here means that black can bring defensive reserves over because the f pawn has moved. So even if like we got to this position, there was no fancy bishop f2 stuff, you're still toast in this position right here. Right? Okay. So, um, what we need to do then is then go back here and say, oh, I can't, I can no longer be obsessed with the pawn. Um, and then we want to ask, well, what should we do instead? E5 looks interesting to like shatter their pawns if they take, as an example. Bishop F2. Good move, king f2, we fall into it. Now somehow you won this game though. Oh, it says 1-0, it says oh, but it's actually 0-1. <laughs> That's actually 0-1. I have mixed feelings about this game. I feel like I played fairly well in the opening and had a good position. Actually proud of myself for trying the attack on h6 even though it didn't work. It was a new idea for me and I learned from it. I now know that I need to have a really solid attack lined up before I pull the trigger on a move like that. Okay. I also need to not get stuck on one plan and forget about my opponent's threats. Very nice set. Okay, yeah, good. Now, let me just say this. If you play e4 and just play principled moves, let's say you follow the dojo, you don't study any openings or whatever. You just play principled moves. What's going to happen is you're always going to get some move like h6. It's all, you know, pretty much. Okay. So then the art is then not learning how to memorize some openings, but oh, the guy's going to give me some move like h6. And then I need to learn by studying my games how to take advantage of such a move, like using the e5 opportunity that I pointed out here. Okay. Great. So BM Chess, you're doing well. Doing well. Does BM have any clubs? No clubs. Okay. I think I already looked. So let's go back. And next up we have a Burg. Two months, two graduations. Trust the process. Put in the work and you will see results. I absolutely need to give credit to all the pluses. The pluses in the program are players above you who give you advice. Maybe look at your games. They gave me feedback to help me get more in depth with annotations, especially JT. Thank you, JT, who not only gave feedback on two games, but also has played me in a blunder game. The blunder games is something we came up with. Actually, I believe, am I right? That the famous Je ne suis pas Dave, who's graduated all these times, was the originator way back in the day of saying, we need to just concentrate on not hanging stuff. And so the blunder games are playing quicker games just with the idea of no hanging. No hanging our pieces. So, but also play me in a blunder game. My goal for this cohort is to dig more into the sparring and of course finish Polgar and everyone's first chess workbook onward and upward. Great. Let's give Aborg a click here. Nursing professor and ER nurse. Okay. Hmm. Piffle Sticks, dude. Piffle Sticks. Nice. We're going to have to go look at how Piffle Sticks is doing. So that's their USCF. Really cool that they're doing the USCF. And great. Let's go activity. We'll click down one. 28 hours. Obviously some great work. Mm -hmm. oh, it looks great. 
Looks absolutely fantastic. Then we'll see clubs. Oh, we got the New England Dojo and uh, Adult Improver Dojo. That's great. All right, games. And we'll click this one, which was played very recently. Unfortunately, I can't count this as a classical game played since I didn't use half my time. Let's see the time. Something's wrong. Something's wrong with our time graph. Um, spent 90 minutes annotating it throughout tonight, slowly getting towards that two, three hour mark and continuing to see the value in longer evaluations of various lines. Good, okay. Now maybe this was actually just inputted and that's why we're not seeing the, the time manually input okay nothing wrong so far c3 mildly problematic because you're not bringing out your people right so uh bishop b what are the candidates bishop b5 bishop b2 knight c3 maybe some kind of bishop move those are your candidate moves for development good good poor my plan here was to prepare b4 so that I could finally put my dark square bishop to work in some way. I overlooked something. See the c4 line. Now, it's not about the c4 line. It's about you not developing, right? So what are the candidate moves in this position? Rook e1, knight d2, knight a3, maybe bishop b3. But the primary one has got to be rook e1. And then you, then you proper in the dojo to then say, check to the miserable king. Okay, so here we go, a3. And then they make a very typical blunder here. Oh, that wasn't it. That wasn't it. Okay, so the queen a4 question mark. You need to take the knight first. Let's read what you write. This was one option I looked at but dismissed it because I think black is getting better with more development and a pawn. After getting my game reviewed by Siusim, I have more to add that negates my previous assessment. As it turns out, it works in my favor. Right? Queen d4, bishop b5. You will see this tactic many times in your games. And on bishop d7, it's very important that we don't take first. We check. We don't want to lose our bishop. And that's winning completely. And then it's important to say, what was the problem? Well, the problem was dude could have gone back. Dude could have gone back and he has successfully stolen a pawn from you. Okay, so bishop d7, thank you very much for the piece. And now you have a winning position and then the, you know, the challenge now will be for you to convert. Right? And here you can definitely take this and you're winning a pawn. Thank you very much. Now, I don't know why Bishop B3 is a mistake. They've hung two pieces and there's not much that they can actually do here. Good. Okay. 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 Yeah, you're playing great. Whoa. I don't even know what I was thinking with this move. I didn't track the clock. Okay, so what you should say, just take the rook. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. Weird. Thank you. I would take on e6. I'll take on e6. Just to trade. Just to trade it all off. So far, your technique looks pretty good. Now, that was poor, right? He resigned saying that he had been planning on resigning for a few moves. <laughs> okay. Now, if somebody had blundered... By the way, at this level, you shouldn't resign yet. Because think about it too. You won a piece ages ago and here you're still only up a piece, right? So you haven't actually proven to black that you can close this out. Hey, of course, at GM level, you'd expect it to be resigned a long time ago, but that's not where we're at here. In fact, one of the key things we have in our middle game sparring is, you know, being up a piece and closing it out. Up two pieces, excuse me. We're up, we're up everything. I should have said that. Bows. <laughs> oh. I get it all wrong. I make mistakes too. I wasn't even counting. I didn't really, I forgot to do one another rook, Bows. 
Alphabets are in Stan. I apologize. I apologize. Okay, but Aberg, you are doing great. Really cool. Uh, yeah, I love to see the progress. All right, let's go back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do better. I'm going to click on the person now instead so I can instantly go back. Next up is another person who's graduated many times is Ormley. And here we got, I haven't had time to work on chess lately aside from a couple of daily rapid and some chess comp puzzles since I ran out of book tactics months ago. We're gonna look at its tactics. Played one classical game a while ago, enjoyed annotating very much as always. In other news, I visited my local chess club for the first time. It was a lot of fun to play some casual games there. Although I am by far the weakest player among them, aside from the literal, literal toddlers, pretty humbling, but still a great time. Sadly, I won't be able to join their weekly training since those are scheduled during my work hours. Not sure if I want to join the club given that limitation, although I don't know if I'm able to play tournaments, local or otherwise, without being a member somewhere. We'll have to figure that out. Okay, cool. So, let's go over here. And um, one of the new, many new beginner players, Chess Boom. Great. YouTube, do, just Dojo YouTube channel, okay. I feel we, we've kind of figured out that the, there's all kinds of ways people find us, but the YouTube channel is like the main one. And just clip 702, look at that. Look at that rating graph, dude. Fantastic, doing really well. And then one of the cool things Ormley's talking about is, um, it seems like Ormley's found a club and then maybe at that club, they, he can start playing some, um, some rated OTB games. All right. So let's go back. You didn't click on him. Like you said, no, <laughs> first of all, let's click. We got to click somebody. So lots of tactics. Now, what Ormley was saying was that Ormley has already done all the tactics. Let's just see how true that is. He says he's done all the tactics. It might be true. Already for this level. So, so what that would mean is, like, <clears throat> before he even got to this level, he had already done... Wait a second. Yeah. Before he even got to this new level, he had already done all the tactics. Now, if I go 600, 700, he had already done all the tactics here, too. Okay. So the man was crushing. And one of the things we are definitely thinking of adding for 3.0 is more volume of, let's call them easy tactics on the under 1000. And by easy, I just mean tactics where somebody's hanging a piece and you find it, you know? Yeah. Now it's true, Alpha Pats, that you're never done with tactics, but there needs to be a balance with the other things, right? Okay. So, Ormley's crushing it with the tactics, and when we go to activity, and we go 600, 700, we see they really did a lot of tactics. And let's click on just to see everything. So, just the beginnings of the Maiden 2s, and it seems like they're already done. Wait, wait, wait. Anyways, that looks really good, and I just want to check with 700, 800, and then we hit tactics. He's done a couple mates in two. Mm hmm Okay. Right, this especially, we need more in here. This is all good, but we need more. Uh, I have a, a, a nine-year-old friend doing everyone's first chess workbook, and after he's done with that, I'm gonna have him help review that book for me, and that'll help us think about how we use that book. I really like it in the program. Um, how we assign it in the under 1,000 cohorts. We got any clubs? Yeah, European, German Dojo. Schön, okay, here we go. So let's look at some games. Ormley. <clears throat> I would like it to be, if I could, a, um, a game that was OTB, but maybe it's not that way. So here he's playing someone dramatically lower, but okay, this is a recent game, so let's do this one. Do we get a time? There we go. So Ormley is black, 
And as often happens, when you play somebody online, they're not going to take their time. Like this person clearly just checked out, just blitzing it at the end. They, like the bucket was full, and they were like, I can't think anymore, Bows. I'm done. I'm done thinking. Okay, here we go. Fine. You're doing fine. Bishop B6. Okay. Mildly controversial because you are, it's not a developing move, right? Okay. So, by the way, Bishop B3, good move. The way to deal with it, I think, would be to go snippos, hippos, and cripos, and just say bows. I'm, my development is amazing. I'm about to play rookie eight. I can take this guy later if I want to. But here we lost a tempo. Okay. Okay. And then here white loses a tempo, right? Definitely a key position for us here, for both sides. My instinct would be to castle long. Um, you investigate ed5, and bishop takes b6. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You go bishop b6, a b6, then castles. Okay, also a thought. This is some good analysis, by the way. Look at this. Look at this. Now nine castles. This idea came up during the retro. I think we meet the, the postmortem. Yeah. Bishop e6. This is a great analysis, too. E5, knight, g4, good, true. And then white, of course, needs a move here. Um, let's see, does he have different moves? It just looks like e5. Good. Okay, this is great. So, one of the things I stress it every time is at this level, they are going to hang Tempe. And that's exactly what happens here. Uh, so you're doing great. Mm. Okay. I'm going to call bishop g4 frisky. Um, the easy solution, okay, would have been to snip here twice and, and defend your extra pawn with bishop f5. You get frisky. It makes me a little nervous. But maybe you can do it. Okay, I'm, we're gonna say it's <laughs> we're gonna say it's probably okay. Yeah. So Bishop E two would be the natural move. Looks like a mistake. And then Rook E one, check is interesting. The problem with this is can he avoid trading queens? If he cannot, then his Rook E one is just a chump move, right? Yeah, so this looks good for you. Because I don't see how he avoids trading queens. Okay. That's not it. F2, very aggressive. You know, because you could castle too. Check. Queen e7. Good. Snip, snop. Snip, that wasn't it. I initially marked this as a mistake, thinking that they should not be looking to trade while... Well, down two pawns. However, I can't seem to find a better move. No, they're in big trouble. Now, just, it's a little weird to me why, no, I guess not. Well, we could, of course, also take with the king. And it looks, it looks compelling. Good. Look at, look at that bishop on b6. So, oh, dang! Putting the king in timeout. <laughs> I'm gonna steal that one, dude. I'm gonna steal that one. I've, I've, I've heard a lot of chess remarks, dude. I don't know if I've ever heard putting the king in timeout. That's unfortunate. That's pretty good. No one knows. Good. Good. Check the miserable. All right. Thank you. And this guy's just blitzing here, too. He's not doing anything. 
Oh, give me that rook. Okay, so that was really well done. That was really well done. How's the famous Ormley? Ormley has graduated muchos times. And uh, that looking great. Here he's playing Iceman and Oct Otakon. That was last year, but I recognize those game, those players. Also, I think Easy NH as dojo players. Too many grads this week? Well, we'll see, dude. We'll see. Uh, actually, let's go back and we'll count them. I need to stop. I need to learn how to click up correctly. So, we have uh, 32. There might be a couple more trickling in tomorrow. So my intention is to just take my time here today and do the under 1,000 crowd, and then tomorrow to do the 1,000 plus crowd. Okay, now Jeanne Suipod, Dave, really cool that Dave gets to graduate again. Let me just say, if you have a moment, which you will, of frustration, of being like Baus, these kids are all killing me, and I'm not making progress, think about Jeanne Suipod, Dave. This dude, has been grinding for a long time. And he goes back, I'm pretty sure it's Dojo 1.0. And originally, he was very frustrated with missing basic stuff, right? And now has graduated again and again, obviously getting better at it. And yeah, it's inspirational. It shows that you can do it, right? Let's read what he says. Playing long games and analyzing is super helpful. The Dojo Open Classical is really helpful for getting a weekly game with serious players. By the way, ooh, man, like I can't stress how important this is, the, like a Dojo Classical, because if you play any kind of longer games on Chesscom or Lee Chess, the cheating rate just goes out the window. And I think it's just like people are sitting there and they're 30 minutes and they can't help it. Whereas you're in a blitz game, it's kind of, you know, you'd have to open another window. You have to be looking quickly back and forth. No, they're not going to be cheating as much. They might still be cheating some, but like once you go rapid, oh, it's hardcore. But you, and at the dojo, it's not like you're completely insulated from people having that temptation to cheat, but it's just going to be much less. The demographic is different. Okay, rant over. I find doing a lot of tactics is also helpful, especially before because I visualize the whole solution before checking the answer and for online tactics before playing any move. Essentially, I'm doing a lot better because I'm blundering a lot less. Nice. I did try doing the blunder games, but don't really enjoy the fast time controls. By the way, we created blunder games. <laughs> I'm inspired by Je as we bought Dave. Just fine that he doesn't want to do the fast time controls. So I ended up just trying to train my thinking and visualization using tactics puzzles. I do want to be able to play rapid games reasonably well, so I'll try again to make them a regular habit. I like the idea of sparring, but it feels inefficient, kind of like I'm wasting the sparring partner's time, and sparring sessions are difficult to schedule. Long games are difficult to schedule as well, but the reward is greater, so both players will make a more earnest effort to make it happen. Okay. Interesting. Um, how are you going to go about under 1,000 grads between today and tomorrow? Well, I don't know if I understand the question, but I'm going to do all the under 1,000s today and then the people over 1,000 tomorrow. There might be a couple other people that are coming in in the under 1,000 tomorrow that I'll have to check, um, but that is my intention. So let's, oh, and we're gonna open this in a different window. So here is Dave. I jumped up from 800, 900, from 600, 700, skipping seven, eight. That's due to a really good tournament in February where I gained over 200 points. Really cool that Genesis with Bad Dave is doing the USCF, OTB. Technically, I could graduate to 9-1,000, but I think it is likely that my next OTB will shave off some USCF points. But if I gain points, I'll probably move up at that time. Live near Houston, working full-time, studying chess evenings and weekends. Play OTB in a small club, G60, once a week. Love. Great. Love that extended period of deep concentration that arises during a classical game. Oh, fantastic. 
I'm pumped on Genesis Pod Dave. Look at look at that rating graph, my friend. Look, he's down to a 100, 124 in May. Look at this dude. He is blundering less. And one of the cool things I think for blundering is you know that you are blundering much less, obviously when you go up, but I think like 1,000 is the, the place where I find, like blunders will still happen after 1,000, but that's just a general area where the blunders stop, start becoming, you know, less obvious, right? Okay, so let's take a look. Here's the activity. We're gonna back it up one. 224 hours. What's Dave doing, Nandocho? <laughs> He's doing some tactics somewhere else. Okay. So that looks great. And let's look at these tactics. Right. I think the Polgar mates in two will serve Dave well, especially where he is in the new cohort. Yeah. And actually then, well, I'm going to check something in just a second. If we go back. Um, this looks great. And that's going to be the algorithm one conversion. Clubs? No. So uh, we want to hit also then activity. Let's go look at the training program. And let's just see what he's got for tactics in a second. So right, he's got to go up to 425 maintenance and two. He's already done a couple. So that's great. Okay. So activity games. Well, this is really cool. We're going to see an OTB game here. And it looks like this is OTB that black. I think he means, well, right. So Dave is 737 at this point and his opponent 1500. An upset. I had played Nathan about seven months ago and he crushed me. He had a rating of about 1570 at the end of 2023, but had a bad turn previous months, dropped back to his floor at 1500. Very strong player. But I've gotten stronger since. I forgot to record move times, but I did capture the clocks at the end of the game. I'd used almost all my time, and Nathan had used just a quarter of his time. Nota bene, one of the cool things about being in the dojo is we're very centered around the idea of using your time. And so this guy at 1500 might be thinking, oh, I'm gonna push this guy off the board. I don't have to think that much. Oh yeah. And that's where we can get some hard won points. You know, that's how we can do it. That's how it's possible. All right, here we go. So far, so good. Weird, right? Weird, good move. C6. Okay. Now here, if you let's say you didn't know anything about openings, right? What would you do? What would be the move? You'd castle. Yeah. That's what we do. There's so so C6, you're being um, misled by some opening structure you've seen in some other thing. Because A3 wasn't it, right? B4, B6. I want you to castle. Now, if you're going to play c6, then it would be a little bit more natural to play cd. 94. I don't like it, of course. This was the opportunity I was looking for. I saw that I could post my knight on e4, and it would probably be hard to remove. I'm also thinking about my bishops and queen all pointing at the king's side. I'm looking for some attacking opportunities there. Now, that's cool, all right? But... These ombres need to be gotten out. So the default moves should be some kind of bishop move, rook e8, knight d7. Those are the moves you should be looking at. All right. Now that's obviously weird because it allows knight c3. And now you find a nice tactic. Bam! Bam! Ah, really well done, Dave. Boom! That's right. Yeah, and then you say bishop b2 was better than knight bd2. Absolutely. Now, let me scream at you just a second here, Dave. I realize that the rook is a tasty, tasty critter. But in the same way that we don't want to take a pinned piece, we don't want to take a piece that can't move anywhere. 
right? So for example, here, stronger for white would have been queen d1 threatening to move the rook out of the way. And so he's just assuming, oh, well, black's gonna take and then I'll take back. No, no, you don't have to. <laughs> There's no threat of him getting in the way. So what should your default moves be? Knight d7, rook e8. Make him lose a tempo with queen d1 before you take. Snip, snap. B5, a little weird. A little weird. What did I want you to do? Knight bd7. Good. Ooh, here you missed queen b takes b5, right? So, um, what you're writing here is interesting about queen b5, queen c7. But I think we're going to see it's not so simple. So the first thing we should say is in this position, you need to defend this pawn either with queen b6 or rook c8. I like queen b6 best because you're threatening a5, right, to open up your rook. But this, what you you got to put a question mark here. At the very least, you got to say, oh, I missed queen takes b5, right? Now, queen h2, maybe, okay, but king h2, cb, Rook c7, it's still kind of complicated for this boomer GM to figure out exactly what's going on. I think rook fd8. And it's, yeah, it's a little confusing. It's a little confusing still. Oh, there's no rook c7, Bows. Hey, Jesse, there's no rook c7, buddy. <laughs> so if that's true, if that's true, then yes, queen takes h2 for sure. Okay. So knight b8, tepid, good. If you weren't going to do that, by the way, then you put your rook over here, buddy. Put your rook there. Mm. Now that is tricky because you're enabling him to play b5 here. If b5 wasn't an option, then I like a5 a lot. And now you lose your mind with c5. By the way, I do think you are winning this position. You just take this, take this thing, thank you very much, right? Notice that when we play knight b8, the problem is that our rook, it's really our rook that's crying out the most. Yes, the knight is sad, but it's the rook who's really sad. So then when this goes down, that's why b5 is not only putting pressure here, but it's saying, oh, this rook can't get out. So they let you out, and here, pap, pap, and then you take, and it's all over. The guy's not doing anything, right? And I remember this kind of C5 move from your past, Dave. <laughs> I remember it's like, it's kind of a freak out move. It's like, oh my God, he's putting this pressure on me. I don't know what to do, you know? And then I'm sure you're thinking very fancy thoughts when this is going down too, right? And I like what you're saying about D takes C5 being the best. At the very least, it's the thing we should be afraid of because he's now opening up this diagonal. He's opening up this attack. Yeah. Okay. Alpha Passer asks, if you were on the end of a 300-point present from FIDE, should you be graduating based on that? going to be a question for a lot of people. So there's a lot of behind the scenes action. If you want a deeper dive on it, we did a podcast that came out the day before yesterday or something like that. And uh, we had a stats guy on. And so we there, there's a thing that our genius coder turned us on to. It's a coding thing that I never heard of. It's called the ostrich algorithm the ostrich algorithm and that just means we're going to put our hands in this put our heads in the sand for a little bit on this one and then when may comes around we're going to have a new rating conversion table and what's probably going to happen is it's the whole all of the cohorts are going to shift up a little bit so now i'm guessing We'll see what the numbers say. It's not just going to be like me saying something. It's what the numbers will tell us. But I'm guessing that the USCF 
will now be like, especially if you were 1400 US CF before, and then we would normally say that correlates to 1500 FIDE, now 1400 might correlate to 1400 FIDE, right? So we're gonna shift some stuff around. Um, so I would say, you know, wait a little bit, <laughs> wait a little bit with the graduation, yeah. Okay. But in general, you that 400 points, it's amazing, but you will be moving up some. You gain 300 points, right? Also, Penro asks, good afternoon, I could graduate today if you have time for one more four or five. If not, I'll graduate Friday. If you graduated today and I was aware of it, I would, I would do it tomorrow as part of the show, but I might forget, so Friday's a good option for next week. Okay, so BC5 and you call this equal. Good move, thank you. Queen D7, what, what move do I want? Time is still important and I want you to start moving your rooks in the game. Weird, I want you to move your rooks in the game. Poor, because now his pawns are shattered and now we start attacking him, but this is the wrong rook. We want this rook so that this rook can come get this file. Frisky. F6 is a frisky move. Okay, what's really cool about that is you uh, activated your rook on F8. And now you go for it, Dave. Dude, you really go for it, man. Boom! Holy moly. Let's read what Dave says. With the F file completely opened, I have spotted some strong tactics against the white king. The, this move is intended to deflect the white rook from the back rank and allow me to create a queen rook battery. I believe I'll win significant material and maybe get an opening for a mating attack. This might work, dude. This might work, holy cattolis. Yeah, maybe. Now, I think if it's going to work, though, we had to play queen f5 pronto here. Right? I'm just, I'm just looking at it. Um, no, you, you did play queen f5 pronto, boss. <laughs> you did fine. Dave, that's a good tactic, dude. That's a great tactic. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, that's great. So now, right, we're threatening both this and that, and there's nothing to do about it. He gives you a check, and then you talk about h3. Then um, what you should maybe do is give us a variation, and I guess maybe we would say check here, and then we've got several moves that are interesting. Uh, rook d8 comes to mind. Rook takes comes to mind. What I like about rook d8 is next move we can play rook f2, and that's a big uh, accomplishment. Queen f3, good. You just go back, nice, very nice. Dave, you're definitely getting better, dude. You are definitely getting better. The um, annotations are also much better, and um, yeah, you're starting to really get there as a chess player. One thing maybe also to bear in mind, you've heard this me say this a bunch, but now that you're not hanging pieces as much, start trying to get religious about time. So what do I mean? C6, no, develop a piece, right? Uh, and then 94. No, that's developing a piece twice, right? So there's so many moments where you needed to bring your pieces in. And what I want to stress about that is once you get religion on this issue, that it's much easier to learn, much easier to get religious on the issue than it is for uh, people to learn not to hang stuff. That takes, that, as you've seen in your progress, that takes forever. But learning not to give away time you just know on 94, you're like, cry's probably gonna yell at me. C6, cry's probably gonna yell at me. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. 
yeah, Meyer Zerker says this dude is not below a thousand. I think he's gonna, I think he's gonna make it, my friends, too. Like, if we go back and look at his rating graph, I mean, he's crushing it, man. He's crushing it. Yeah. Okay. So, well done. Click, click. And now this is Mr. Jask. Mr. Jask is at 788. I think they graduated and then fell to the floor. <laughs> fell to the floor, Mr. Jask. Okay. Sometimes it happens. Let's go back one, see how they did it. Lots of tactics. Let's give it a click. Oh, excuse me, lots of end games. Uh, games and analysis. Tactics. Okay. We got any clubs? The dojo down under. Nice. So, let's look at Mr. Jask. Great time playing this game. Spent another 40 minutes on annotation. Stockfish says all the good moves I made were bad. <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> okay. Yeah, Matt, you're Zerker. You don't want me to yell at you. Okay. 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 So both players, by the way, making good developing moves. Fine. Fine. And that's also a great evaluation. Yeah. Now, what's wrong with knight g6? It's not a developing move. So here's the moment where black needs to think about it. And um, knight b4 is definitely a pain in the you-know-what because let's say we go queen e2. They still take, and now they got this kind of juice, and we can't play queen c4 because of knight c2. So... Moving a veil piece twice. Will they give you Tempe? Yes, they will. G3. Oh, no. Oh, no. This move stops Black's G6 knight. But look, Baus. You're, okay, okay, look. Here you're becoming uh, irrationally afraid. If the guy plays knight h4 next move, that will be another loss of tempo. Okay? That's just another move where he's not developing his stuff. Furthermore, he loses pawn over here. So... Oh, now notice you had a whole narrative about G3, right? And when people lose time, they generally have these narratives. But, but you should check yourself. You should be like, oh, that's not the right narrative. Here, queen F6 might be good. Knight A5, again, moving develop piece twice. And here, I think the most natural thing is not to play B3, though I appreciate B3. You could also just take and then castle. We need to castle. What is black doing? They're not developing. Uh-oh. Now it's getting frisky. It's getting... Okay, this is fun what you're doing. And now, muy importante, the guy's hanging his business here on d5. But that's also a good move. That isn't inspiring. That's pretty good. And now G4. Well, Baus, you got to at least say something about this G4 move. <laughs> I got to at least say something. <clears throat> now, I want to stress this G4 move. Maybe we could call it next level, but there's a simple way of doing things here. And that is to take. We've won a pawn and now we're going to win another pawn. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's win it. Let's win it. Now, where your move is next level is when dude does take, this pawn is keeping the knight trapped. But the issue is, Baus, he could have snipped your, snipped your coconut here. He's just not seeing that he can snip your coconut. I, now this move I don't like because if you wanted to play rook g1, you should do it. I don't understand that move. By the way, what is he doing? He's just giving you time. Every single move, he's giving you time. Let's say check to the miserable king. Mm -hmm. This leaves me with a more active knight. Maybe. I calculated. C takes. Good move. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now you play f4, which needs explanation. 
really, really need some explanation. So this, to me, is a very interesting endgame. Um, I do think you are probably winning here, but it's not over yet. F4, I don't understand what the point is. One issue for us is we really just have one weakness, and it's not clear how we get at these spots. Let's give it a try. Knight F4, King H6, Knight E6, and now I think a reasonable move for black would be Knight B7. This covers this square so that Knight D8 isn't a thing. And the good news is black can't do all that much, but this would be a point in the analysis to ask ourselves what we should do. <laughs> you want a Spanish stream? <sighs> okay, F4. So when we ask ourselves in the opening time to do what, right? Same thing in the end game. You have a little bit of time here. He plays F5. I'm not really convinced. I don't understand where that knight's going. I don't know. No one knows. And then he blew a pawn. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. 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 Frisky but good. And now that's got to be a winner. Boom. And in general, this should be winning. Boom, boom. I like the king e4, f5 is the final touch. It secures, I, the, let's say, call the king the shepherd. It secures the shepherding squares over here for the pawn going forward. Okay. Okay, so that was good. I blew it again. I was supposed to do a click so I could go back immediately. Wouldn't have to do this. But, you know, I'm a boomer. It takes me a while. Takes me a while. Okay, so I'm going to do a correct the mundo here. This is Dr. KMN. And Dr. KMN is a nerd. Let's follow him because he's a nerd. Got a rating of 812. Had a nice little jump, hence the graduation. And we'll look at uh, activity. And uh, they didn't log their time, but they did this much work. Let's see their tactics a little bit. Nice. Really good. And they actually jumped, they jumped the, the they just jumped over a cohort. You know, they were six, seven, and now they're eight, nine. Clubs? No. Games? No. Oh, no games. Bows. Come on. Give us some games, Bows. Well, Dr. KMN, looks like you're doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. You, yeah. If we go back one, we'll see how you... That's how much you did. Okay. Yeah, you're clearly on a path, dude. You're going you're gonna to be making it sooner. And we just need you to do more wrecks. No games, no party. That's right. <laughs> no games, no party. <laughs> Next up, we got Fred G. I continue to graduate without any annotated games till I join my right rating group. I will then annotate games in order to improve my actual ratings. Thanks, Fred. Now, let's go look. I have a feeling Fred is in the wrong rating cohort. Let's go look. Yeah, Fred is not in the right rating cohort. So this is not really a, this is not a graduation. Let's go back. Next up, we have Grand Maddie Chess. Okay, 805, already graduated once, great pick. I wanna click on a pick so I can see like a little more detail. Um, beautiful rating graph. And let's look, activity, we'll go back one. 32 hours, tactics and games and analysis. Looks really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is looking great. Clubs? New York City area dojo. Nice. Uh-huh. And um, let's look. I want to see. They look all like online games, which is okay. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, fine. Now, what's wrong with D5? Not developing. 
Good. 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 I just want to say, what is really cool is that um, Grand Maddie doesn't need to know openings to play this way. His opponent's given him a tempo, and what is he doing? He's just developing. It's great. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. A6. Maybe, but also wasting a ton of time. Now, first time I'm going to yell at you. Boom. What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? We just, you just did so well. <laughs> so what should you have done? You got a free pawn right here. Look at that. Not only do you get a free pawn, but you prevent black from doing any touching of your coconuts over here. So you guys get religious about not giving away time. There might be some position you have to play a3, but this isn't it. This isn't it. My Zerker doesn't get the normalized ratings. Basically, imagine it this way, My Zerker. We got all these different rating systems. Lee Chess is just incredibly inflated. Um, and we got various national systems. And so the normalize, we have to we had to create a normalized rating to bring all these together. And it was based on the FIDE rating, still is. And of course, FIDE just threw us a curveball with this latest announcement. But, you know, we can deal with it. We're, we're big kids. <laughs> we can deal with it. Just take the juicer. That's right. Okay. What's wrong with C4? It's not a developing move. Right? Good move. H3. Not a developing move. What would a developing move be? Queen E2. Rook AD1. Bishop B1. These would be all develop fine developing moves. Hmm. Okay. I don't object if you want to do it this way. You could also play around to bishop b1 with that plan I just mentioned. What's wrong? Not developing their stuff. They had to take on uh, b3. Thank you. That's a free pawn. Thank you. Mm, I don't know about queen b3. Yeah. Knight a5. Queen b5. Very good. Boop, that wasn't it. And now you're just up two pawns. Bishop c8, notice the bishop had a, was a nice square, right? Thank you, simple chess. And here I wanna stress, there's no need to take immediately. And we can still think about this position within the, let's call it rubric of time to do what? Okay, so the simplest would be here. That's rook is useful there. We want to also be thinking about moves like a4. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's how we get into trouble. Good save. And then he blunders his piece. Thank you very much. Now, okay. Yeah. By the way, here's a... You're absolutely right that we'd like to trade, but look at this move. Bam! And now he still has pretty much got a trade, and we just fixed our pieces. But I get it. Good. No one knows. A4, good move. A5, good move. Okay. Okay, good move. Good move. Good move. Now, let's see if you finish this off in style. Rook A6. Okay, now... Um, you have a little bit of time here, and I'll just stress, here you should be looking for the knockout blow. I think a simple way is pop, connect the bishop to the pawn, and then rook b1. Next move, we're going to land it over here. Yeah, that, would, that didn't help him, did it? <laughs> that didn't help him. There we go. No, he's not doing nothing. Thank you. Thank you. And he resigns. Okay, Grand Maddie Chess, that was great. And Cry, you know what you did, buddy? You, again, didn't click it correct, the Mundo. In any case, Grand Maddie Chess, congratulations. Doing great. So, next up, we got Rob Hassett. I'm going to cl click it correct, the Mundo, this time. And it's a Lee Chess. Dude, Rob Hassett. 
is looking like they could graduate already. Mustard Tiger. USCF, okay. So they got a bunch of different ratings, you know. And we, by the way, you know, if he plays most on Lee Chess, that's what he should be using. Eventually, it would be cool if he used his USCF. Okay, so. Hay que elegir los userinos correctamente. Userinos. Nice. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good quote. Activity. Boom. Boom. Looks like Rob jumped. Oh, he just jumped 100. That's great. Five hours of work, a lot of tactics. Mates in one, mates in two. Okay. So, clubs? Games? Oh, Rob's got a bunch. Let's take a look. Um, at this point, as long as you develop, I'm not going to say anything bad. And in fact, GMs have played this move. Okay, poor tactical decision. Also, breaking with our religion. What is the religion? Develop your peace. So one of these, excuse me, one of these two squares with the bishop and then we castle. Yep. All right, we're down a pawn. He says, I'll take that. Thank you very much. Yep, that's a good move, C6, because now he's going to have D5 next. D5, oof, brutal. Black's playing a pretty good game. Cheap threat, but I get it. <laughs> Queen G6. A little safer for Black, I think, to play G6. And then we build a wall of light square pawns. This one, I don't like. Good move. Mm. Good. Good. Now, this is our fundamental problem, honestly, is that, um, like I said before, once he puts the pawn on g6, it really is a rock there. Good move. Good move. And he's just raging you. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, Black's playing a pretty good game. Uh, this, though, he got a little frisky here. In fact, let's go back a second. Here he needed to do either rook f8 or uh, rook f5. And so f5 really did give you at least a chance at counterplay here that you didn't use because in this situation, now you have rook g1. And all of a sudden, the position has become... Uh, a little, little tricky for black because black, white is gonna, black's gonna lose this pawn. We're gonna get some invasione, as they say, and black needs to then watch himself. Uh oh. Uh oh, I'm getting, I'm getting taco over here. Potential spam. I say no. <laughs> I say no potential spam. <laughs> okay, so that was a big miss, and notice. I think you're just moving. What, okay, this is really important, Rob. What's going on here is you and your opponent, and in the annotations too, it suggests like there's nothing to think about. And we see this all the time. It's when people get to the end game, they're like, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to shuffle back and forth. Your opponent actually has been give, give you a huge chance here, right? So if we take our time, look at that. Both players, especially when they got to the end game, they just couldn't think anymore. If you can force yourself to think in the end game, you will find moves like rook g1 and your rating will go up. It's that simple. You don't have to be a genius, right? You don't have to be a genius. Just be like Christ says, they're not going to think in the end game. And so he says, there will be opportunities for me. And then that's all you need to know. How much do I, do I speak Spanish? I would say 2008, my Spanish was pretty good. I would say, no, let's just say it was the beginnings of poor Spanish. <laughs> It was the beginning of poor Spanish. I played some tournaments in Mexico. I was reading some novels in Spanish and stuff. But then since then, 
No, it hasn't, hasn't been going for me. There's other things were going on in my life. So, good. Let's go back. And that was Rob Hassett. And now we get, let's call him Aqua Fresh. Aqua Fresh. Like many have said, the structure the dojo provides is top notch. I also want to recommend the weekly training plan that is found in the Important Leaks channel in Discord. This provides an additional form of structure that I've never, and I never have to wonder about what I need to do each day. The longer games and analysis are a lot of fun, although I think I spend too much time with the analysis and don't play enough. Especially at my current level, correct me if I'm wrong, what do I know? The weekly sub 1000 sessions were also a great help. Special thanks to Coolmaster X, the host, with special guest appearances by M. Norris Chess, Laurent, and Sleepy. Sparring is a part of the program that I've neglected a bit, but this is my own fault. The ones I did do, thanks to Michlaut, were was very insightful. Even though my rating may fluctuate a bit, I believe that I am on an upward trajectory and the rating will even out in this new cohort. Okay, great. Great. I think I'm going to go revisit that weekly training program in just a second, because we did that ages ago. It'd be good to just reflect on it a second. So this is Aqua Fresh. I'm going to follow. He's in his late 30s. Okay. He's a young pup. He's a young pup. Being from a small town in South Africa, zero access to playing OTB. Okay. So 907. Here we go. Activity. We're going to back it up one. Dude has done a lot of work. Dude is doing the work. Great. Actually, he was talking about the ratings. Let's go check that out. So 907, 1021. Well, this looks very consistent, really. That's just a nice upward trajectory. Okay. So. Penrill says, can confirm under 1,000 sessions are awesome. Here's a bunch of games. Oh, wait, we got to look at the activity one more time. Looks really, really strong. Mm hmm. 142. Dang. That's work. That's work. All right, here we got some games. Aqua Fresh. Uh, one thing I will recommend, Aqua Fresh is if you have trouble finding OTB games, a lot of people have this, I would definitely say, play in like the Dojo Liga. Get that classical game in. And you really focus in on it. Use a real board next to your computer, right? You don't want to be distracted by the screen. And then you just hear, set it so you hear a little click or something. When the guy makes a move, otherwise you're over at your board, right? All right, let's take a look. So... Aquafresh, you know I'm going to say you don't need to be learning. I try to follow the principles using this system as a backbone. Okay. Good move so far. Um, yeah. Now here, it's actually a, a, a tricky moment in a sense because you don't have to play knight e4. And you will get this bishop c4 thing again and again and again. Just over and over and over again. And um, the, it looks like a good move, bishop c4, but in fact, not only is it going to be hit with the knight e4 trick, but it can get hit by this and the, this too. So it's kind of a vulnerable piece on c4. And here you can also play knight e4. Um, I, and this is, by the way, great annotation. Look, let's read what he writes. And he says this is a little bit better for white. I think the engine might say it's better for white, but uh, to me it's just equal. But I appreciate the, you know, totally fair to believe it's better for white. Also, maybe you don't want this kind of position, right? So the thing I want to stress is knight e4 is not the only move. Castles, bishop f4, now I'm hoping you take it. Dang, nice. Nice. Uh-huh. I like knight e4. It makes more sense with the bishop on f, I think, on bishop on f4. Good. Now, one tricky bit here. Tactics. Um, is that could dude have played bishop c7 here? 
the intention being this. I don't know, it's, so it's kind of hectic. I am not certain what's happening here. That would be something to look at. One of the cool things about learning and opening is not memorizing a bunch of stuff, but just realizing, as you kind of did, that you're going to be playing these chumps who play bishop c4 all the time. It's generally not even covered in the opening books because it's kind of thought to be a bad move, but this is the number one setup you're going to get at this level, right? So you then want to have a deep understanding of all the different ways when knight e4 works, right? Now, if you don't like knight e4, again, c6 is a reasonable move, intending b5 and d5. But this is good. Again, there's bishop c7 question. Takes. This was not a good move. Okay, but because here my opponent granted me the opportunity to play bishop f5. Well said. And one of the things uh, I want you to say about de4 is you have... Remember I was saying earlier, I was talking about... you. It, <laughs> you shouldn't take the pinned piece. Here you have a forked piece, so they're not going anywhere. So we want to make some other move. You mentioned bishop f5. Okay. c6. Time was not the problem here. No to bene. Neither player is really thinking, and now we have a truly complicated situation. And White just, we just, he's just like, okay, if you want to let me develop all my stuff, I'll do it. I'll do it, buddy. And Rook AG1, natural and strong. Yeah, and this was definitely way too fast. Snip, thank you very much. C5, now you're going for tricks. Okay, so what do I mean by tricks? You're trying for a mate on B2, and the guy is so much better developed than you here. 95. Okay, they do think for two minutes. It's time for White, by the way, to really sit and say, wait, I got to be winning this position. How do I do it? Right? Now you talk about queen e3, dc. Um, I think another very hard to meet variation is knight g5. That looks rough to me. And even his move, I don't know if I was terrible. CD4, Rook D4. So he's he's holding it together because uh, you're undeveloped. Um. Yeah, no, it's a hard moment. Good move. And now he blunders with rook d7. And you talk about h3, okay? I think uh, more convincing would be some kind of move like rook d6 intending queen f6 and mate. So we get him. Thank you very much. Now, did he think on that move? He actually thought a little bit. Good move. Simple chess. Queen e7. Queen f2. I did not identify my opponent's threats. Note to Benny, you also played it instantly. This is a great example of an impulsive move. You see a threat and you go do it, not thinking about what's going on, right? Bishop g7, good. Bishop g7. Let me just say positionally too, you got to fight that diagonal, right? And I would say, I would say you're technically winning in this position. We still have some work to do, but you have the, not only the exchange, but it's like this beautiful rook. Yeah. Queen d2, and uh, you talk about bishop f7. Very nice. Um, 
it is true that this Queen F2 does set a horrible trap, right? Um, Bishop F7, Rook F7, check, Rook F8. Yeah, and then I guess we still need one more move. We need to say Queen D5, Rook F7, and then we have a couple different moves we should consider. Right, queen e4, rook, rook d1, things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, rook f1, and now bang, we got him. There, when we do puzzle rush, this tactic happens all the time. I used to call it uh, the millennial trick because it happened so many times in it. If we use chess comps as a criteria, this is brilliant. It's a standard sacrifice in a mating pattern. Yeah, I'm marking it brilliant. Fight me. <laughs> Good. Good. This is great, man. This is great. I really like this annotation. And I want to stress that you can learn to play openings, and you should learn to play openings when you're at this level, not by reading some crazy book, but just being like, all right, here's some principled moves, and my opponent's going to lose time. And when they lose time, I'm going to get good at exploiting that loss of time. Okay, Wayne Beam's here, nice. Okay, yeah, the 800s have become a little tougher, my friend. Yeah, we're talking about people, I mean, this dude. Well, first of all, Aquafresh is clearly on the rise and will we'll soon, you know, be above 1,000. But yeah, th that's like, dude, is below 1,000, he's finding some pretty big moves. So it's just getting harder, my friends. <laughs> it's just getting harder. Okay, so that was Aqua Fresh. Where are we now? Miguel. Had a long string of losses while my rating was still provisional. I was underperforming compared to my rapid rating because I was playing classical games as if we were playing rapid. The program's emphasis on playing slowly and using your time has been helpful to break bad habits. The boatload of tactics training I've been doing has helped too. Fantastic. So, Miguel is not only graduating, but looks like they're getting ready to graduate again. So, activity, we'll back it up one, and uh, boom, doing really well. Actually, this might be the end of the show, because I was supposed to stop at 1,000. Hold on one second here. Yeah, I was supposed to stop there. I was supposed to stop there. Uh, but let's do Miguel, and uh, here we go. So clubs, German dojo. Now, you know, there are some German dudes named Miguel. <laughs> I, I met them. I met them. It's a little, little, there's a lot of uh, Dutch dudes named Miguel because Dutch people name their kids all kinds of crazy stuff. Here we go. Um, and he's solid playing Luis de la Fuente, definitely a dojo battle. So let's go check it out. So D4. Okay. Um, not familiar with how to play against 1D4. Perhaps I should have moved my light square bishop outside the pawn chain first. Yes. Or even developed another piece like knight F6. Okay. Now it's not the end of the world, but you're going to be a little passive now. Good. Good, good. By the way, this is Luis de la Fuente's favorite opening. It's an opening setup, and it takes forever for him to get it going. We might have seen this game, actually. I feel it strikes me as familiar. Yeah, yeah, no, we've looked at this game. We looked at this game, right? Yeah. So, Miguel, fantastic. Uh, we could look at a different one. How did I possibly look at... Maybe because I was doing top of the cohort or something like that. Or top of the club. Let's look at this one instead. Okay. So what's uh, wrong about, well, yeah. What's wrong about e5 here is that black can get a good French structure with the bishop outside the pawn chain. So what your opponent does here is the same mistake you made. And now what do we have? We have an advanced French. Poor move because c5 is necessary. 
frisky, good move. What, what is the problem with a6? Loss of time. Bishop f4, okay, I would prefer castles, but okay. Ooh, and here we really need to castle, and you noted it, because of bishop a6, and now it's a little uncomfortable. However, c4, please, would have been a good move. b3, full friskiness. Now, let me advise to say, the guy is not developing, and when they don't develop, you should be um, em emboldened to give away a pawn or two. And here c4 is a really strong move. Let him take. Notice when they take, it's not a developing move. And then what do we do? We castle. And our development is just stunning. We're about to play rookie one. This guy's getting hurt. Okay. C3 though, the bishop a6 is still alive and he gets chance to develop their stuff. C5. Notice C5 maybe is not a terrible move, but it shows that they just don't respect time. A little bit more consistent might be bishop b4. Okay, bishop b3, not a developing move. What would a developing move be? Rook c1. Rook c1, good. Queen c7, not a good move. Oh, let's play rook takes c5. Oh, rook takes c5. Bow. Not developing. Oh my God. So notice what you're doing. You're going crazy. It's like girls gone wild over here. <laughs> what, what are we doing? And now you've just lost your mind. E4. And now black is totally crushing you, I think. It's, it's spicy though. There's a lot here. I don't know what's going on. There's just a lot. I don't understand that move. And then they crush you. I don't know if you had any hope there. The mistakes were made by both sides. But what I want you to see is that, let me go back a little bit. Here in this position, let's count it out. You are up two tempi. Let's talk about why. Because you got one dude out and it's your move. Furthermore, we can even make a claim that you're kind of up three because this dude owes you time, right? It's not out, it's gonna, it's gonna struggle to find a way out. And it's not so easy for this guy to find a way out either. So what's our move? Castles, castles. We can figure out the rest later. What's the next move? That move looks good, right? And we are gonna crush this fool because they haven't developed their pieces. And this guy, continues to not develop and not develop and not develop. And that gave us muchos chances throughout the game. Um, let's read what Wayne Beam says. By the way, Mumbo B, thank you for rating. We are at the end of our graduates. We're doing two graduates. So we have so many people graduating on the dojo that I'm breaking it up into two days. <laughs> One, we're doing the under 1000s uh, today and then tomorrow, we're doing the over 1000s. So thank you for rating. <laughs> Fesha Kruma says, we did not castle our coconuts. That's right. And then responding to Triple to Horn says, Wayne Beam says, well, if they're playing by rote, they won't likely give away time, but they risk when things deviate. Correct. And the problem is too, when you're playing in the under 1000 level, they will deviate. Trust me, under 1,200, they're going to deviate. They will deviate, my friend. <laughs> and by deviate, what he's talking about is just saying, like, they're not going to be playing the theoretical moves, right? So, um, oh, Bumblebee, thank you. We're going to raid you a bunch, too. All right. I think I deserve something, okay? I deserve something. Just one blitz game for me, okay? Just one. Not a bunch, just one blitz game for me, Bows. Oh, to cleanse my soul. Let's go. And then we'll raid somebody. I think it's that. I think it's that. Now, how does it work here, Cry? Didn't you have this figured out once? Oh, God, I did have it figured out, Bows. I did, I promise. Yeah. Oh, 
he says he doesn't like me. Well, I don't like you much either. <laughs> Where are you going to go, taco face? Don't call him a taco face. Give me a break. Cry, he's not a taco face. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is a taco face. Who are you kidding? This guy's got taco written all over him. Okay, let's just go here and see what he wants. We're just moving our pieces out, Bows. It's not meant to be insulting. We're just moving them out. Check to the miserable pawn. Where do you want to go, son? Mm. Oh, I love coffee. Coffee is really good, you guys. Oh, he's writing a novel. Oh, that's a good move. Hold on. That's, don't don't do what I, you almost did. You need to move it, though, buddy. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Let's move here quickly, please. Quickly. I'm not taking forever on this. I'm a little upset with this move because he has knight d5. Well, maybe I can play bishop takes if I want to get really super fancy. Let's just do that. Am I threatening queen a7 bows? I don't know. I don't know. How would I know? All right. I said I was going to do it. So I'm just going to do it. Do I like what I did? I don't know. Mm, we're going to do this. It's a little funky. I know. I know. He's got rook b2. Will he find it? Probably. Is it the end of the world? No. Am I stinking up the dojo a little bit? A little bit. Let's go here. He still needs to play rook b2, I guess. Rook b2, I could also play knight d5 if I wanted to be a real jerky jerk face. Whoa, he's letting me play knight d5? Hmm. Huh. Let's take it. Oh, what's he doing? I'm going to take this one. Now, generally, we would play rook takes b2 here. Okay. Let's just go here. Here. With no fear. Ooh, that's a little annoying, huh? Darn it, cry. Did you really do that to yourself? Ooh, yeah, 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 I cry, you fool face. You fool face. Oh, buddy, did you have to do it that way? Really stinking up the dojo this time. Oh, man. Oh, stinking it up. that. Not a bad move, Mr. Scrubs. Mr. Scrubs. Oh, this is really hectic here. He's going to bishop e4 me. I got bishop c3. Am I sure? I don't know. Am I sure? I don't know. That sure looks like a disappointment for him, though. Check to the miserable king! Yeah! Taste these nuts, Vendetta. These nuts. Who's nuts? These nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just go ahead and keep making your little threats, son. Okay, I'm gonna make a queen, Bows. Yeah! 
Do we give him a rematch? Sure. Give him a rematch. <laughs> taco, taco face. <laughs> New 3 0. It's going to be a genocide of FMs today. Okay. I've never. Is that correct, Amundo? I don't know. Just move your pieces, Bows. Just move them. Told me to do it, kids, so I'm doing it. Now, do I have an issue here for Mr. Tissue? That's a pin. This guy's no chumpity chump face. Ooh, that might be a good move. Cry, did you blow it? Oh, I blew it. Oh, I really hosed myself there. Okay, let's go here. Mm, I think Bishop B6 has gotta be winning. I play Rook D3, Queen B8, Knight E8, Rook B4, and I'm done. I Chihuahua. What's he thinking about? No, I have I have Queen F8. I have Queen F8 saving my poor soul. Whew, that was good. That was good. But if he doesn't stop me, I'm gonna play Bishop C5 and live. And live, my good friends. Oh, he's writing a novel. You gotta love it when they write a novel, you know? Queen G5, huh? All right, we're gonna go here. Thank you. I'll go here. Thank you. Now you, you have nothing special, my good friend. I take. Oh, he wants to go to a bad end game. We can do that. We can arrange the bad end game, my friend. That's something we specialize here in at the dojo, honestly. Oh, you're going to suffer here, son. Maybe that. Oh, I definitely want that move. Mm, this pawns are split O's. Good. You will suffer, my friend. You will suffer. Welcome to the dojo. Now, is it over? Not yet. Not yet. No, it's over. This fool's done. Check to the miserable king. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, cry. Don't blow this, okay? We know that you like to blow it, and I would prefer if you didn't. <sighs> ah! Ah, man, cry. 
Oh, now you just got done telling people they need to think a little bit and then you didn't think, you big chump face. <laughs> you big chump face. Okay, how does it go? How does it go? Pop. 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 Where are you going to go, big chump face? Oh, very fancy. Well, mama said, so that's what I'm going to do. It's really hot here. Oh, mama. I'm in fear for my life from the long arm of the law. <laughs> Hangman is coming down from the gallows and I don't have very long. Death Knight. I don't know. That Mama just said that we needed to move it, so I'm trying to move it. Now, H6, I have both EF, fancy, and Knight F7, which probably just doesn't work. But EF looks strong. Whoa. Uh -huh. Okay, good. It is very hot. It is very hot. <coughs> it's hot. Whoa. Well, let's just say it has become very hot. I'm taking this bad boy. All right, I'm going back. He's saying I'm toast. Maybe, maybe, but I'm also going here. What now, brown cow? Predictable. Now. This is a really kind of messy situazione, my friends. I didn't think eight, Bishop H6 was it. Okay, that was, <laughs> it's getting awfully hot. So knight E2, he's got rook F2. But, but then I play knight D4, and then he's got rook F1. I'm hoping and praying. There's problems with this because I go rook f3, king v2, bishop h3. Holy moly. But rook f3, ooh, he's getting real fancy over here. So he still wants that thing. hg, rook f3, king g2, bishop h3. Does it work? I hope so. Uh, I don't know, man. What the hell just happened here? God, he got me. He got me. Oh, that chump. That chump. <laughs> All right, last game. Last game, and then I'm raiding somebody. I promise. It was just one blitz game. No moss, T.L. Borger says no moss. Okay, here we go. Oh, 
I was crushing that fool. It was complicated though, man. I like it. Cause chess is an easy game. I don't know about this. I'm just moving the pieces here. You know what I'm saying? Right. Frisky. I don't know about that move, guys. That might not be it. Okay, that might not be it. I'm willing to admit that that might not be it. Little frisky, huh, to cry? Little frisky over there, buddy. He says he doesn't mind. He doesn't mind you and your friskiness. I'm just moving. I'm just moving the pieces, Bows. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm just moving them. I don't know. Forgive me, Lord, for I have sinned. That's pretty annoying, honestly. This guy's going full dojo on me. That's pretty annoying, too. Okay, buddy, you're not going to need the little think for a little... I don't want you to be thinking, buddy. That was the part about this game I didn't want you to do. And this, you said you were only going to play one more. What are you doing? Oh, man. Crying, you jerk face. What have you done? All right, go in like you knew you were going to do anyway. Get out of Dodge, boss. Mm. I don't know. I'm just moving here. I need you to move it, Cry. You are taking too long. Do you understand? Too long. Do you have anything on queen c4? Probably not, boss, but I had to move. Forgive me, Lord, for I have sinned. And I got 26 seconds left. At least I'm moving fast. Oh, come on, baby. Take this one.
had to move, man. at this dude I have never had any aspiration for being a blitz player so we're gonna raid somebody who are we gonna raid mm. Ooh. let's raid